I'm Russ Sheath, and welcome to Hanging with Heroes, the podcast where your heroes meet their heroes. For the first episode of Hanging with Heroes, I'm thrilled to invite two titans of the comic book industry, who have each left an indelible mark on pop culture's most recognisable icons. Sean Gordon Murphy is a writer and artist who has been propelled to comic book superstardom with his take on Batman in both White Knight and the sequel, Curse of the White Knight. Sean has become one of the go-to visionaries in the comic book industry, working with writers such as Grant Morrison, Mark Miller, Scott Snyder and Rick Remender. Sean's artistic vision has been immortalised in statues and in toys, including those realised by our second guest, Todd McFarlane. Todd's accomplishments have propelled him to the top of his game, beginning with his visionary and character-defining take on Spider-Man in the late 80s. Building on that success, Todd joined the six biggest artists of the era to form Image Comics and to bring us his creator-owned character, Spawn. In 2019, Spawn broke industry records as the longest-running independent comic book of all time. Alongside comics, Todd has directed videos for the likes of Pearl Jam and Korn, revolutionised the action figure industry with his own toy company, produced an Emmy Award-winning animated series, and remains the only Image Comics founder to have a movie based on his own creation. Todd is currently working on bringing Spawn back to the big screen in a movie which Todd will write and direct himself. Before we begin, here's a word from our sponsor. Yeah, no, I'm really glad we could all get together. I uh, really, really wanted to talk to Todd because I uh, I watched this sci-fi documentary, like Hell I Can't, and I have a friend who's a, a reporter, and he hears me go off on things, and I talk about like the business, and I don't mind rocking the boat, and he goes, have you ever talked to Todd McFarlane? Because you guys, I think, would get along a lot. And I, I said, I, I did a cover for him, and we've talked on the phone a few times, but... um. I never really got to meet him because you should definitely talk to Todd. And I had a weird week where I felt very isolated in comics. I'm like, man, I feel like I'm not an artist. I'm not artsy enough like everyone else in comics because like I pay attention to the numbers and I ask questions and I feel so alone. And then I saw Todd's documentary. A lot of the stuff he was saying was stuff out of my head. And I'm like, this guy is asking the same questions. Like he's just as angry and venomous and he doesn't care what people think of him. And like, I need because I just felt I felt like I wasn't alone in that moment because I felt like Todd seems to think the way I think, which was really it's really what I needed in that moment. (laughs) Sean, Sean, we're 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 both a little bit selfish here, which we should be. Everybody should with their job. Yeah, I think I think we had another moment of it recently in the DC fandom. Right. Uh, Which was a big production. It had a lot of stuff. It was super cool. Yeah. But and I'm completely biased. I, I was I was a little disappointed there wasn't more comic book stuff. Yeah. Right? I, like, like where, where's where's the where's the DC comic? I mean, I, I see DC. 
ICC, you know, I, maybe I'm, I'm just an old guy. ICDC, that means comic book. Yeah. And then the other stuff, right? Where yeah. maybe an eight-year-old is like, no, it's all about movies and TV. And then, oh, I didn't know it came from comic book. But I, I kept waiting for the comics and, and, and it was like, man, it was, it sort of, it sort of seemed to get a bit of a push to the back a little bit, if, if any, mm. if, if, if any sort of, yeah. back, uh, which is a, you know, it, disappointing as a comic book geek. And then especially if I was a, one of their top flight talents, I'd go, man, you put everybody on that show except for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe they just thought we were busy or I, I tend to turn down a lot and try to do as few interviews as possible. I don't know if you're the same way. Uh, I, it depends. It, it, it depends. So I, 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 I've gotten to the point, unfortunately, Sean, where I consider myself to just be a billboard for the brand that I work <laughs> for. So it's like if, if somebody wants to talk to me and I can yeah. twist it to whatever the thing is that we're doing that I can grab, then I'll do it. Right. right. So like, like a good politician, you know, yeah. Hey Todd, how's that? You know, if I'm doing DC multiverse toys, like, How's that Spawn movie come? I can very quickly turn it to DC Multiverse stories, right? <laughs> or, or vice versa, yeah. right? So I'm I'm just I I just use myself as as yeah. a, a marketer, if you will. Well, how long did it take you to get good at that? Because that's not something that you train for in art school, especially for people that are traditionally introverted. Because I haven't had any business classes, but I've had to learn what ROIs mean, how to lead a team, how to make a pitch, a pitch deck, the stuff that wasn't really required of as an artist. Like we're yeah. supposed to be introverts that just stay home in our underwear and act weird online. Yeah. Um, but I found like if I'm going to forge ahead, like I never asked to to lead a team to write Batman spinoffs. But all right, I'll do it. I'll see. If, you know, I can't be as bad as some of the other stuff out there. I'll do my best. If it fails, it fails. And I found that that attitude is very rare in comics. But I, it seems like you have that too times ten because you have a huge company. The the I I think what ends up happening is that you know most employees are going to complain at some point in their life. Right. And, and I just got to the point that I just said, I've, I've got two choices. I either complain and do something about it mm -hmm. personally, or I don't complain. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, but complaining and doing nothing, I don't have the, I don't have any patience for it. I've never, I've never really had much patience for it. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm right. a, a bit of a black and white guy, Sean, that I, yeah. I think everything is solvable. Right. I wouldn't be a very good uh, uh, self motivator speaker because, you know, the, the, it would go something like this. Thank you for all coming in here and paying your twenty dollars and driving in the winter and getting here. So uh, yeah. this is going to be sort of short. We're going to solve about ninety five percent of your problems. If all of you <laughs> would just bend over and reach under your chair and pull out the item that's sitting underneath the chair Good, good. Everybody's got it. Good. Okay. Now turn around. Now what is it? It's a fucking mirror, and you're looking <laughs> at ninety-five percent of your problem. So, so here's how it goes. If you don't like your boss, quit your job. If you don't like the person you're dating, drop them. If you don't like the color of your hair, dye it. If you don't like the music, turn it off. If you like, you can solve almost 85, 90 percent of your own problem. There are very few problems that are like that are outside that aren't fixable. Right. So. Mm -hmm. so, right. so again, if it's cold where you live, then move to a warm spot. Right. You got two choices. Either move to a warm spot or mm -hmm. stop complaining about the cold. But what I ended up finding out over time is that people it was it's almost a sort of a nesting thing that people just have to say it so they can get through it. So they can go back yeah. to work the next day or they can live through that harsh winter. They don't really mean that they hate the winter and they're going to leave. Why? Cause they go, I don't have a job. My, my mm -hmm. friends and family are here. So then they tack on all these other pieces. And this is where the black and white was, which is, I always thought that those complaints had a period at the end of them. Right. Uh, so right. I, I would have, let's say one of my young uh, employees come to me and they go, John, man, I wish I could, wish I could, you know, afford a house. And I go, Oh, well, well you can do that. And they're like, Oh, how? And I go, shoot, this is easy. Let's go downstairs. Boom, 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 boom. We went outside, go, which one of those cars is yours? They go that one. I go, sell it, sell it. How much is that car worth? That's 17,000 bucks. A down payment. You better get a down payment on a house, 13,000. Right. You're done mm -hmm. there. We're good. You got your house. You got your down payment. You're good. And I know how much I pay you. You can make that mortgage. 
Yeah. How am I getting? How am I getting to work? Uh, see, I thought it was a period. I thought you asked, "How do I get a? How do, how do I get a house?" Period. Now, yeah. now we're adding commas, and that I get to keep my car, and that I basically get to continue to go out to the restaurant, and I don't, mm-hmm. you know, like. And now they. It, this is this is now my cake and eat it too. You basically want to win the lotto. I get it. I got this. Yeah. Now get in line with 8,000 people. So to me. What they're asking you is, Todd, how do I get everything? I can't do it. And that, what, I, yeah. what I've said is like pick one goal. This is what I do. I pick one goal and I am blind in the focus of it. And everything from two to a million is of no consequence to me. There's no, it's like, there, there's, it is of no consequence. So if my mm-hmm. goal is to have a half a million dollar red Lamborghini. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody's goal is. I'm not here to make fun or judge your goal, but, but it has to be number one and everything is number two. And now everything you do should be towards that goal and everything else. Who cares? Well, I got a bad boss. Who cares? That's not your number one goal to have a good boss. Your, your goal is to make money so you can get to the red Lamborghini. So who cares mm-hmm. what the job is when you got to do it? All the other stuff that goes with it is white noise, right? But we're not built for that. We we mm-hmm. actually have all these flavors that we want to taste during the day, and I'm I'm okay eating vanilla all day long if, if it gets me to my end. So you're not you're not really I'm not really good at coddling people myself. I don't have kids, so I don't know if I would be a good dad. Um, it sounds like you are you good at coddling people, Todd? Uh, no, my kids will tell <laughs> you that when they were younger, every time they cry, go, it's your own fault. Right, it's the same thing as I was just saying here. It's your own fault if you hadn't been running yeah. when, uh, and doing that stupid thing. And so they always used to to go to mom. So I, no, I'm 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 not very. I I don't engage. I don't get I don't get I don't engage in people talking about why they can't do something. Right. I mean, I want to do a podcast. Right. I want to. As a matter of fact, we've been talking about because I'm curious as to why people talk themselves out of it. Right. Like what, what's your upbringing that got you to this yeah. point that you want something so bad, but you will basically figure out how to do nothing towards it. What's what, what is it? What is it that has gotten you so that you don't trust yourself? Cause I'm mm-hmm. the opposite. I don't know about you, Sean. I'm the opposite. I love me. I think I'm great. And I, if you ask me, can I do it before you even at, tell me what it is. The answer is yes. Before we even get to the to what it is you you're going to ask me to do, I'm I'm delu- right. I'm delusional in what I think I can do, and I'm curious about people who are 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 not confident in their own abilities. It's weird. Well, it's that fine line. I think you mentioned this in the documentary between er- like handicappingly arrogant versus I believe in myself enough to lead a team and get things done, but I'm still grounded. Like you're not turning into Napoleon. You're not going off the deep end. You're sort of able to ground yourself. Like I know you say you love yourself. Like I love myself. I'm sure Russell loves himself. But it, what stops you from going totally fascist on the world? Uh, because because I'm not trying to convert anybody. Right. If you if you Sean, if you look at a thousand interviews that mm-hmm. I've done, ninety nine point nine percent of the comments are all about me. This is why I do this. This is why I did this. This is what I think about this. this. What I what I don't do is speculate as to why Jim Lee does anything right. or why Greg Capullo does anything or why anybody else does it. And part of it is because I never, I always find it sort of interesting when people project why I'm, I'm doing stuff because they're completely mm-hmm. wrong a lot of times. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting because I thought I actually knew the answer. I'm only me. Uh, but I guess that stranger knows more about my motivation. So I don't, I don't, I don't speculate on anybody. I just go, here's why, what I do. Here's why I do it. Here's why I'm going to continue to do it. Here's how I, the process of doing it. And if you want to do it, fine. If you don't fine. I'm not changing my life. I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Completely. Right. I'm, I'm on the Todd path. Do you see yourself as uh, the Steve jobs of comics in a way? Uh, that's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a big it's a big comparison. So I'll, so right off the bat, I'll say no. On a small <laughs> on a tiny scale, I will say uh, yes. And here's why I say the yes is is and I've given this example before. Steve Jobs was smart enough that 
you know, when I talk about like the iPhone, that I go, when he came out and introduced the iPhone, which is only about 10 years ago, which seemed staggering I know. to anybody, <laughs> uh, that, that the phone that he came out with, essentially, I know there would be pop people that will argue that are super geeks, but I'm saying in general, he came mm-hmm. out with an item that did exactly what was already on the marketplace. Everything that that phone did was, was exactly in the marketplace. Made phone calls, so did every other phone. Took pictures, so did every other phone. Did emails, you know, uh, whatever it was mm-hmm. that you want to do. Download music. Check, 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 check. Every phone out there at that point that was high end was doing all of that. You know what Steve Jobs did that made that, made that phone? Oh, oh my gosh. Is that- he made a sex tape. Yeah, it's it. That's all he did. He just he made he said yeah. instead of touching the plastic knobs with letters, right. you taught you touch glass with letters. Still letters. Mm-hmm. You're still saying, "Hey, mom, I'll be home at 10. Still the same sentence. You're still hitting right. the same QWERTY. It's still a QWERTY uh, keyboard. So you're going to the same mm-hmm. spot. You were touching glass instead of plastic. Bamo, bamo. He figured out the sexy in my entire life, Sean. Yours to some extent. All of our. We none of us create in a vacuum. Everything that we create is based upon something we've already seen, and then we just add something to it, right? So right. we don't have to invent the mouse the the mouse trap. We just have to make a better mouse trap, and people will think that you invented it. This is the bizarre mm-hmm. thing. I get way more credit for. I'll, I'll be the first to say I've, I've invented nothing wholly original ever. So, but. People think that I've done more than I've actually done. All that I've done is take 98% of what exists and I put two to 5% of sex on it and I mm-hmm. and it goes and people go, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're so creative. You're so innovative. You're so, and, and the bizarre thing, Sean, is that, is that everything that I've done, somebody could have done before me. That's the, that's the, that's the most right. bizarre. Thing. Did you, I mean, if you rewind it back to your 20s, were you did you ever have a phase in your life where you were so, seeking wisdom or following writers or speakers or people who were thinkers and you were asking questions like, uh, how does this person think? Is this something that I want to take on? Do I disagree with that? Like, did you have that phase of your life or were you always headstrong? And I mean that as a compliment, headstrong. Yeah. No, no. Uh, yeah, there's different words. So uh, headstrong, my mom would use different words for it. Uh, and so I, I was like that. Uh, here's what I did do, Sean. And I don't know about you. Yeah. I don't know about you, Russell. Um, I read the comics journal like it was my Bible. And and mm-hmm. what would, would happen in the comics journal is I just kept reading the same story. Neil Gaiman, or not Neil Gaiman, it's a whole nother topic. Uh, Neil, <laughs> Neil Adams, uh, you know, sort of got pushed around a bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Ditko, Jack Kirby. I remember Jack Kirby. I'm like, and Jack Kirby was the one that had the big impact that I, I remember sitting on a dock where I was reading it. I'll, I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. And, and having this epiphany of saying, oh my gosh. Because I, I had wild dreams of maybe breaking into comic books. Mm-hmm. If they can do it to a guy named the King, they can do it, mm-hmm. they can do it to anybody. And so I was I was acutely aware from reading those articles that essentially them uh, taking for granted the individual mm-hmm. creators had been going on since the, since the dawn of creators uh, and especially in comic books. And, and, and yeah. so I knew that if I ever was to work, walk in and go to Marvel or DC, I was going to go in with my eyes wide open and, yeah. and, and not expect that I was going to be somehow special. As a matter of fact, I knew I wasn't. Yeah. That, that somehow eventually it was going to ricochet. And, Sean, I had friends at some point that were in the industry that got those phone calls. That all mm-hmm. of a sudden, thanks for your 20 years of service, there's a younger, yeah. faster, cheaper version of you. Thanks for your effort, right? Yeah. Uh, and, I, and it scared me. It scared me. It's funny. Uh, early, I was doing a book for uh, DC once, and... Um, the writer was three months behind and me and this other artist were both waiting for different books. And, uh, I went to Karen Berger and I complained and I complained politely. And I said, you promised me X. Uh, I don't have X. I have more mortgage to pay. Like, I'm not trying to sound ungrateful, but this, this writer, I don't know where the hell he's at. And, uh, she ended up giving me 
ten thousand dollars just as a to keep me in just to keep me happy and then five thousand and then five thousand again so they gave me 20 grand because i complained politely and i i made my case in a professional manner i wasn't and moaning and all that and the other artist didn't do any of that stuff and i won't mention his name um but I asked him about this. I was like, why didn't you raise a concern? I mean, they promised you work. And, they, and he goes, well, I was just so happy to have work at DC. I mean, you're working with this great writer who wants to complain. And I'm like, you have, I mean, put your fanboy aside and consider the fact that one day you're going to have a family and a mortgage. Like, this is a job, dude. And he thought it was so weird that I would complain. And I, I wanted to tell him, like, hey, I got 20 grand for complaining. You're, you're standing there holding your dick like. I guess I win. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, Sean, as I've gotten older, because again, when you're young, you just sort of do all this. As I've gotten older, the one thing that I have to now acknowledge for every human being is their yeah. own personality. And, mm -hmm. and, we're, and that personality, there, there are some things that you can train and there's some things that you can't. So I, I, I coach baseball. I played baseball at a high level. I was you know, yeah. all the way through college, but I coached at a high level and I used to call the parents in. I go, hey, there's three there's three things that I'm never going to be able to teach your kid. One, can't can't teach him to throw harder because otherwise every major league will be thrown 300 miles an hour. Can't teach him to run faster. I mean, I can coach them up a little bit. If they're average, I'll get them a little bit above average. You know, not going to go from average to fast. And I can't mm -hmm. teach them to give it. I can't teach them to care, to want to hustle. That's either in them or it's not. And you yelling from the sidelines or me trying to kick them in the ass, which I'll do in a, in a nice, polite, you know, fatherly way. But either they care about wanting to bust mm -hmm. out today or they don't. So fighting for yourself, I find now is just a personality trait. Uh, and, yeah. and, and for those of us who do it naturally, because it's just in our DNA. We didn't learn it. It's just, mm -hmm. we came out of the womb, I believe, with the, yeah. with the, with the personality. It, it, it's foreign to us to see somebody who has the skill, who has the reputation and doesn't want to sort of, sort of fight for their fair share of that. Uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, especially when they got the skill, I'm going, man, your skill, my attitude, woo, we, we, we be doing yeah. a lot more. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I, I, it, it's a frustrating part, but we're all not mm -hmm. we're all not built for it. You know, some somebody once said to me, and I believe they go, "There's you can put everybody into two buckets. There's, there's only two kind of dogs on the whole world. There's those that bite and those that don't. And you can never get a dog that's a non-biter to bite because mm -hmm. I've seen them. Nice, passive yeah. dogs. Kids will pull the hair, pull the tail, jump like, and that dog at worst will snarl and then go to another room. But what we'll never do I, is turn and bite the kid, right? I, I feel like a lot of people in comics are dogs that won't bite because yeah. they don't want to rock the boat. And I, I, I get blue in the face telling them, like, you could have more. Like, you're not asking for a raise each time. Like, you should always be asking for a raise. You should be going out a few percentage each year. Like, like, why didn't you ask? And, like, no, they're not wired that way. And I got so tired. It's like I'm speaking to the wall. And I just started to just give up and just assume, all right, you guys just want to be poor. You guys just want to be you want to be the next Bill Finger, yeah, yeah. you know. I I I I I used to do this speech, uh, Russell Sean, up, up, and I try to rally everybody to go. Come on, you, you why not you? <laughs> right, like the next big yeah. change in the world. Why not you? Right, I mean, what get right. greedy? Uh, but 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 in in the recent years, it's actually a, a two part. It's actually a two part uh, panel. First half an hour is trying to rally you and go, come on, I'm your dad and you can do this and you're great and you can do it. And then, and then I go, good. Now the, the, there's the other half to it. And I'm going to, I'm going to turn off the dad switch. I'm going to become the CEO. And the other half of the speech is I hope the f you don't, I hope you talk yourself out of it. I hope you're lazy. I hope you basically think you can't do it. I hope you think you're not good enough. And then that means there will probably be another hundred people in this room. I will never have to compete with who probably have yeah. twice the skill that I will, if you ever honed it, and you're going to make my life easy. Please yeah. keep saying no. Now, you got two choices. You yeah. can either listen to Todd, the CEO, make my life easy, right. or you can listen to Todd, the dad, and go, screw you, Todd, the CEO. I'm coming after <laughs> you, right? But again, those are right. just different personalities that are going to choose which side of the fence you're going to listen to in that two-part story. Yeah. 
And uh, I did the same thing. I, I in 2011 or 12, Image was getting hot again. Like Saga was out, a couple other books were out. I was planning my moves to work at Image, and I did. And I talked to a handful of artists who were about to re-sign with Marvel. One guy wanted to re-sign with Spider-Man, and they wouldn't even let him ink his own stuff. And they only wanted to give him like 200 bucks a page, which is laughable. And this is like, and I, I said like, hey man, listen, you, especially you, you got a big name. You should go over to Image. You need to do this, you need to do that. Like you're leaving the money on the table if you're just going to work for Marvel. And uh, he goes, well, I really like Spider-Man. You know, I talked to my wife yeah. and we're having a kid and Spider-Man's more reliable. And that had to be the 20th conversation I've had like that, where I was trying to get riled up behind the artists and give them some of my anger because they wanted to talk to me. Like this guy wanted my advice. And I finally decided you know what? Frank. These guys, uh, if they're not going to fight for themselves, like I I'm done. Like I just turned mercenary. So I'm like, you know what? From now on, I'm telling everybody, yes, absolutely go to Marvel and DC because then when I go to Image, you won't be in the landing strip and I can just land my Frank. plane. I started to get mercenary and mad and giving them bad advice because it didn't seem like whatever I was going to tell them, they weren't going to listen to you anyway. You know, if the guy, these guys want to be poor and want to be dogs that don't bite back, then fine. It just makes my job easier. Well, so on one hand, I was trying to be really nice. On the other hand, I was I was just tired of it. Well, well Sean, I mean, there, there is a cliche about taking the horse to the water, right? You know, I mean, yeah. you <laughs> the, the other thing, too, is that uh, I – and again, I, got, I started getting away from it a, a little bit younger – is that for that person – that lifestyle and that is perfect for them, right? So it's not for me to project mm -hmm. onto them. The only time I usually project is when they start to complain because now, now yeah. we're getting into that. Hey, the weather around here is terrible. Oh, well, if you're asking my opinion, move to a warm spot. I like, I like, I've got the answer for you. So, but if they're not complaining about the winter, it's not for me to say, Hey, you've been mm -hmm. at Marvel or DC for 10 years. You should come and do something for. I mean, obviously, there are some people that are built and they're that can do it, right? It, it's yeah. it's the people that, like I said, that you know want a belly ache, but again, do nothing towards it. Once you say, "Hey, there are options," right? There, there's yeah. options towards it. And again, it's not all fun and games, and you you have to basically go and bet on yourself when you're going to go greater right. the book. So there's there's that piece there. The the the, right. the ones that are are a little more bizarre for me, Sean, or when I'm actually just trying to hire a freelancer who just is content with mm -hmm. being a freelancer, which is okay. There's that, that's the vast majority of them um, mm -hmm. that I go, you here's, here's, here's my offer to you. Forget spawn. It's cool. You know what it is. I like, if you want to ask me a question about that, we'll, we can get into that. Here's my offer. You come work for me. I'll make sure that you draw less than you're drawing now, because I'm going to give you plots that are drawable. It, if that's a word, uh, in a, on a mm -hmm. monthly fashion, uh, and and because I never I never plot anything that I I I don't think of that I would have to draw myself. I never make any artist draw something I wouldn't want to draw myself. Uh, right. And and I will pay you more than you're getting right now. So basically, the offer is less work, so you have more time uh, to spend mm -hmm. not at the board, and you will make more money for not working is hard the mm -hmm. the number of people that don't take me up on that offer is staggering is staggering yeah. and, and 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 it usually is well i've got a friend on the book or i like wolverine or i grew up on mm -hmm. the, the marvel movies now or whatever it is and it's only going to get harder yeah. because we're going to have a whole generation that came up on these movies and then I usually, Sean, at that point, just go, you know, can I just do a follow-up question? Like, are you in a relationship on any level? And if, I, usually, <laughs> I usually hope the answer is yes. And if they are, then, and especially if they got kids, then I go, could, could mm -hmm. you put your wife or her husband or whoever, could you put them on the phone for me? And usually when I pitch that person, they get it, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, yeah. wife of, of that neurotic artist, which we all are. I just yeah. offered him to make more money and be able to spend more time with you and the kids. And his answer was no, I don't know what to make of that. That's between you and mm -hmm. him, but that was my offer. Thanks. Thank, thanks for listening to me. Click. Right. The wife yeah. get it in five seconds. Like what are you talking yeah. about? What are you talking about? Right. If it's just about commerce now about feeding your family, yeah. about having steady income, I still and and I still can't penetrate this piece. It's 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 aggravating. It's aggravating. So, 
What's good is by talking to their spouse and getting their spouse angry, you force them to sleep on the couch that night. And by denying them sex, hopefully they'll understand that drawing Wolverine isn't as important as drawing Spawn. <laughs> well, I, I'm not even saying that the character is more important. I'm just saying if, I know. <laughs> if, you, if you don't have any ownership in either of these characters, why wouldn't you want to do the thing that pays you more money at that point? Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like because, like I said, for me, I, I never, I never got to the point where I fell in love with any character so that they could use it against me, right? Because yeah. I saw that in 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 my early yeah. career that the, what happened is every time you went and asked for a raise, they knew somehow they knew because you'd been talking to your friends at conventions or you'd done interviews, they knew who your favorite mm -hmm. characters were, and then they would mm -hmm. sit there and say, oh, Sean, now Sean comes in, he's asked for a raise. They found that Sean likes Captain America, and it goes, and it goes something <laughs> like this. You come in, you go, hey, I think I deserve more money. I've been working hard. And they go, no, 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 we're going to take that under advisement, Sean. But, 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 yeah. but, but, but before you go, I just want you to know, we've been thinking that maybe, perhaps, that we're speculating about doing a Captain America a annual, and that there's a likelihood that you could be in consideration for it. And you leave that offers because I saw my friends do this and they'd come out and I go, did you get the raise? And they're like, no, but I might do mm -hmm. Captain America. <laughs> and, then, yeah, yeah. and they never got Captain America. Let's just be clear. And they never got yeah. the raise. Right. So I'm, I, I, yeah. I, I, I gave up falling in love with any specific character. Cause I knew it was just going to be, I was going to yeah. get bludgeoned by it that I, like, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Right. I, I had that conversation with Marvel, and they're like, "What's your favorite character, Sean? We can't, we can't, unfortunately, match your your DC rate or what you made at Image. What's your favorite character?" And I go, "Benjamin Franklin." <laughs> and I got up and I walked out. And uh, you know, their their reconnaissance actually gets worse than that. Um, I'm not at DC; I've never seen this. I suppose DC does it too because they're a corporation. But Marvel actually listened to everything this writer had complained about for two years. They figured out what his daycare costs what his bills were, his mortgage, his house in Malibu, wherever the hell he lived, and his favorite characters. But they, they figured out what his cost of living was. So when he came in to ask for a raise, they threw in his face and were like, well, you don't really need this money because we know what your daycare costs and we know what your mortgage costs. They did all this creepy 1984. I mean, like they dug deep and he was not the guy to do that to because he flipped out like they were spying on him. And, you know, every drink he'd ever had at the show, everything that had complained, it's like they had meticulously written down notes just to throw it in his face to guilt him into continuing to write Avengers or X-Men, whatever it was. And that artist, uh, right, uh, sorry, that creator has not worked for Marvel since. And I probably would, would react to the same way as I'm sure what you would have as well. Yeah, well, I, I, I've had this incident uh, many times in my life, uh, and it continues every day in Hollywood, where they they gauge you upon like the last person, right? So, in, in, mm -hmm. it, 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 my high water mark at Marvel, uh, I, I think I made $130 a page. Uh, and and they said, well, we can't pay you more because uh, they had another artist that was sort of grandfathered in and had sort of a most favored nation, which means if you go higher, mm -hmm. they have to go higher. So they said we can't. Well, sorry, sorry to cut you off. You made 125 bucks a page when you were drawing Spider Man. Yeah, yeah 100, 100, 100, I I think I. I think you know, I maxed out 135 was my max. <laughs> Just think, if they had a time machine, they could go back and double it, and then they never would have <laughs> themselves by having you go off and create right? an image. <laughs> it would have been way cheaper just to give you a bonus. <laughs> it have taken, I just kept telling them, it wouldn't have taken much. You guys missed. It. You yeah. guys missed it. But the the I but when I was having a conversation, I, I and I, and I again, I still have this today. I like I I don't care what the other person did or said. You know. Because that person that mm -hmm. is getting the most, you should be paying them twice as much, right? So that so mm -hmm. that they were either kind enough or stupid enough to take that offer is of no relevance to me, right? So mm -hmm. so I don't want to hear it. The the answer can be no, you're not getting a raise, but I don't want to hear the rest of it, right? So I, I'm again yeah. the Hollywood example of that is like, well, Todd, you know, we have a precedent, we don't want to like I don't care. I I don't. I really don't care about anybody. How you reason to either yes or no on my offer, right? 
So, because mm-hmm. I I'm I'm just simplistic about it. I'm a little I was born in Canada, we're sort of you know real simple about life. I look at it being my 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 little blue Toyota, and it's sitting right there, mm-hmm. and I'm selling it, and it's twelve thousand bucks, right? So here's what mm-hmm. I don't want to hear. I don't give a f- what you paid for your last six cars. I don't care how much you were able to come up or down with those people. I don't care what kind of discount those other people gave you. I'm saying the blue Toyota behind me is twelve thousand. It's a yes or a <laughs> no question. Yeah. And everything leading up to yes or no, I have no interest in. I have no interest mm-hmm. in it. I don't care how you get to either one of those answers. And no is a fair business answer. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's a valid answer, and I've heard it. Dozens, if not hundreds of times in my life. But what mm-hmm. I'm not going to do is be subject that the last five people you 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 may have taken advantage of and they may have been mm-hmm. starving artists. And because they said yes, that I'm obligated to say the same yes as to those other people. Right. right. I, I won't I won't do it. And if anything, it it starts to get the hair up on my back and I start getting my voice starts to raise. I just, yes or no. This is a yes mm-hmm. or no question. Stop being a politician. Do you want it? Right. Do you want, like, and, but this is going to continue to go as long as they look at us as a monolithic block of starving artists, right? Right. Starving artists. So, which is why I started my company so that I, I, I'm not at the mercy of being a starving artist. Yeah. So I, I, I won't put myself in a position. So that when they say that the starving artist took that deal, I go, well, then, then you, then I guess the answer is no. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'll just go. And it, and you can say all you want. I'll never work in that business or this business or this business. Don't yeah. worry about it. I will live my little sad life of making toys and comic books and living a pretty good life. Don't worry about it. I'm okay. Don't, don't, don't pity me. Argentina. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, cause I, I, I agree with everything you just said. I tend to have the same attitude you do. When I get on a roll and I start talking like this, and unlike you, I actually do drink and I'll get loud and, I and animated and whatever. I know. Um, and people will think, they'll walk away thinking that I'm a <laughs> And I honestly don't care if they think I'm a <laughs> because I know that I'm not. But I have like, I feel like 80% of the creative types in comics who are the types of people that don't bite back well, they're not going to retire well. They're not going to have own their house. They're not going to this and that. I'm not trying to chalk up success to material objects, but like, what do I care if a bunch of dogs that don't bite back think I'm a <laughs> Meanwhile, I get to go home in a nice big house with a, a good wife, pets, kids, whatever it is I have. Like, I just don't understand why the way that you and I come across reads to people like, oh, they're <laughs> when it's like, if you were good at business, you would listen to what we're saying, but you're not. You'd rather just assume, oh, you're an <laughs> Just so you can dismiss us like have fun sleeping on the couch tonight the, the, well Sh- sean i i think depending on your perspective and where you're at in the same incident there's a lot of words that get tossed at you which is okay right mm-hmm. i think there's a, i think there's a razor's edge between a lot of those words between yeah. between being diligent and, and arrogant between yeah. between standing up for yourself and being cocksured uh yeah. between being decisive and being an asshole. I mean, so depending on who you are, what mm-hmm. your perspective is, what you think just happened, the, all those words I did like to me, I'm like, I don't care what the label is. I like you mm-hmm. call me because again, at the end, I, is it, is that a yes or a no? Right. I, I, yeah. I've said plenty of times in Hollywood, like Todd, how did you like those people you met with? I will take the guy who was a douchebag that says yes over the kind individual who said no, right? I'm I'm in I'm mm-hmm. I'm in trying to make content and whoever helps me make content is yeah. is is the right person. So I'm I'm not worried about personality. I got lots of friends. I don't I don't need any additions to my sort of circle of friendship, mm-hmm. if you will. Uh, right. so so the the what history has told us uh, is that People who want to try and do something different, and different can be better or worse. I'm not saying it's 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 good or bad. I'm just saying different. Yeah, will always be considered the rebels, 
They will always, mm-hmm. anybody who goes after status quo is always going to be the rebels. And the reason for it is simple because that means whoever is the status quo is ahead in that game. And if you think mm-hmm. of it as a race, that, that Hussein Bolt is never, ever going to slow down for anybody else in a race. He, the only way he's ever going to get beat if somebody just guts it out and it's just better doing what he does but so Mm -hmm. my so people somehow think that if you come up with an idea that somehow the system should grease your idea your thoughts your personalities for you the answer is no uh if -hmm. anything it's actually going to be quite the opposite they're going to be resistant to you you're going to be the rebel you're going to be the the, the, the guys rocking the boat, all those cliches that we all get, you know, you don't get along to get, you know, what, well, come on, Todd, just, why can't you be a team mm-hmm. player? All those things. Yeah, we can, we can, we can list 10, 10 cliches. Uh, right. That, that there are very few people who have done anything in any profession. Uh, and, and then if we go back in history, historically, that everybody universally says, man, they were a nice folks. God, they were mm-hmm. good people. Right. It just, it doesn't. So if, if, This is part of the personality. When I meet somebody who wants to be a people pleaser, I already know, unfortunately, they're never going to be an entrepreneur in the truest sense. And they're Mm -hmm. they're never going to try to do anything that's going to be a change because because you have to, unfortunately, disrupt, not willingly, but you have to disrupt. And that disruption agitates people even though that's not your reason and your and your goal right uh it yeah. agitates them and then you get the labels on top of you and at some point you start taking them like a badge of honor no big deal yeah so i like yeah. my thin my skin got thick a long long time ago and it happened when my mom didn't like something i did and so it's like <laughs> what do i care about the person in idaho right i like i don't right. I, I i i don't right and so i i I, I, I have this thing here that, that you know, that whole conversation, I, sometimes I ask people when I'm talking, have any of you ever been the first one on a dance floor? Because if the answer is no, you may not be ready for this, right? Uh, mm-hmm. because, because what you wait for in the, on the dance floor when you're at the bar is you wait for there to be, for some of you, there has to be like six couples. And then, and then you can go and make yourself comfortable. For some of you, you need 20 and for some of you, sadly, you need the majority of the room. And then all of a sudden, you're the one that isn't there. So you'll get there. But but mm-hmm. if you never just said, nobody's dancing and everybody's waiting for the first person and you haven't been the first person out there, because because here's my goal. Again, you just have to have the goal. For me, my goal is easy. I'm taking my sweetheart, my wife I've been with for 40 years, and I'm going to dance with her. I'm taking her out dancing. That's the goal. And I'm not going to dance that night because of a strain of what a stranger might think that I, that I move funny. Like mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with my goal. It, it, quite the opposite. I don't know why they're in this room. I thought they came to dance too. Silly me. Yeah. Right. But then all of a right. sudden two wackos get up there four or six, eight. And you've got like, come on, I, this is, if you worry about what other people project onto you, it will paralyze, paralyze you. It will paralyze you.